So the battle is really against yourself. And as I said you know, before, there's nothing new in the, uh, under the sun. All this is laid out for you on the internet and books. I mean, O'Neill's book has got, uh, has got a, uh, is really one of I, only a few books that I recommend. But when I was starting the 1982, and I joined a William O'Neill and Company, he actually he wasn't doing any seminars. He wasn't laying all this out. He hadn't really developed Can Slim. Every once in a while, he would talk to people. He would give an in-house uh, seminar for people for an hour and kind of go over the market. But uh, it was really up to uh, up to yourself to to really look at examples from the past and learn from those. But now, I mean, you've got so much stuff out there. I mean, you could spend a year going through everything that's out there on CanSlim and, and other things. But, but once you put in enough time to learn the repetitive markets and the, the, the symmetry of the markets, you can improve your performance. But remember, it's, yeah, it's a battle again, of you against you and controlling your fear and discipline in the market. Jesse Livermore, here's another quote. How to trade in stocks. Let me say again, the human side of every person is the greatest enemy of the average investor or speculator. So there's a lot of great human wisdom out there on the markets too. And so I, I would like to mix that in. Don't make the market so complicated. Just I, as, as that uh, mathematician said, I look at pictures all day and I draw lines. And I, I, don't, I mean, it sounds so simple, but it's not that complicated and it's being very disciplined in, in, in buying the right setup. So, uh, draw the line, study the patterns, and uh, you'll probably do a lot better in the marketplace. Perfect. And as you're looking at charts, are always are you always looking to buy out of kind of a tight area area right right under that line that you drew previously? There was a nice kind of you know handle type consolidation within that overall base. So is that always what you're trying to do? buy up the right hand side um, right near basically that line um, from basically moving out of a contraction? Yeah. Yes. And that's when I'm going through hundreds of start uh, charts, I'm not looking, I'm, I'm usually very, very quickly. I'm looking at, at the uptrend and then I'm keying off what is happening in these last, you know, six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Is the stock tightening up? You know, it, how's it acting? Is there a, a nice tight, you know, tight spot in there? But yes, I, they, when a stock calms down and tightens up, especially as you're close to the highs, that's your, that's your best setup. Now there are lower setups and, um, you know, Mark Minervini talks about low cheats and medium cheats and high cheats. The lower you get in the base, the, uh, the, to me, your risk starts going up because lots of times they can come out of a lower cheat then move up and then roll over. So you have to be, you have to be careful. If you concentrate on just the ones that are up near the top of their patterns, then you're, you'll probably be, uh, probably do a lot better. And when you're buying from that contraction, where are you usually placing your stop loss? Is it at the low of that tight area or is it at the low of the breakout low of that week? How do you like, how do you usually do it? Well, that's the best thing about a tight pattern is that is that when you have a nice tight pattern, you can set it below uh, the, 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 the low of that pattern. And usually that's not, that's not even close to 8%. It's usually like three or 4%. And so that's what's great about buying off a very tight formation is that, um, is that you can limit your risk. And you know the whole thing. I mean, we didn't even get into risk management and cutting your losses. But uh, but you know, every time I'm buying, I, I do not want any any loss to go above you know eight percent. And uh, most of my losses are much smaller than that. If I have if I have one fault, I probably take my losses too quickly, and I get out of a stock, and then it sits there and turns, and then takes off and goes without me. Um, but then once the stock makes a move, then I use moving averages or I just watch the stock and how it's acting and, uh, you know, look for trend lines. So, you know, maybe after the stock breaks out and makes this move and starts, you know, breaking this trend line or breaking some moving averages, then I might cut back on the, on the stock or sell it out, uh, outright. Perfect. And, um, 
there's a question going back to uh, when you competed in the championship. Uh, let me bring it up here. Uh, so it's from Elizabeth. A question for David. How did you overcome the pressure from focusing on the competition results and shifting to focus on the rules and process? Thank you. Well, that's, yeah, and I, I mentioned that earlier. It's best not actually to even look at your 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 equity and your account and how it's moving every day is is just looking is just concentrating on the rules that you enact and if you enact rules that have proven successful in the past uh you should do you should do very very well i mean it's it's like i told you i said in the fourth year that the, those championships i was so concentrated on performance and 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 how i had to win again that i lost sight of the rules and i started doing things differently i started taking two big big positions and not starting out at five percent and then moving up um you know and, and so i started doing things differently i started breaking the rules so it's it's trying to just get you know don't look at your equity. Don't look at your profit and loss all the time, but just enact the rules day in and day out. And, and that and the equity is going to take care of itself if, if you're doing if you're enacting the rules correctly. Perfect. And going back to that post analysis you did that that really gave you some perspective. I love to hear your advice for traders out there who are doing post analysis. What should they look for? How should they mark up their charts and and what should what, how can they find those ultimate takeaways that can really change your performance? Yeah, well, what you can do now, I mean, say you can either print the chart out, which uh, you can do, and then write all the reasons why you're 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 buying the stock at that point. Also, circling the different characteristics that you're looking for, um, different indicators you're looking for on the chart. You can do that, and then then you know put it into the book, or you can screenshot it, and then and then mark it up, and then you know put that into a file. And then after you after you sell it, then also print out a chart or screenshot a chart of the the, the move that 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 made. And then you go back and you study. Okay, well, did I make money in this? Did I lose money? Uh, and and jot down maybe the reasons of. Oh, it's it's amazing how you can go back months later and look at a stock and go, I can't even believe I bought that stock. What was I thinking? And so, and then lots of times patterns will start developing of, of the same thing you're doing over and over again, which is wrong and why you're losing money. So that, that's why it's as, you know, almost more important to study your losers than it is to study your, your winners because it's actually painful, but you have to go through that. You have to, or have somebody do it for you and be able to have, uh, you know, you know, an ego that's small enough that somebody can actually tell you, hey, you might be doing something wrong here, right. but most people don't want, you know, want to do that. 